Okay, today I'm going to take a look at this um, live steam Bing uh, engine I picked up a little while ago. Um, I got it on uh, um, eBay, uh, no surprise there, and it came um, it came without the piston, the rod, and uh, basically other than that it was uh, pretty complete. The front buffers were missing. Now. This is a Bing O35 uh, single cylinder uh, live steam engine from probably around 1910 or so. And um, all it had was a single feed into, um, I don't know how good this is going to come across, but it had a, a single oscillating cylinder. And the drive of this thing is. Um, a pinion gear and a gear on the uh, axle that drives it so uh, it's pretty simple now I think this train here is one of the earlier ones because some of the later ones had a little cup coming out here for the exhaust the exhaust on this just blows straight down there's not even a pipe on it. it's just a little hole in the cylinder but um, the other ones had this little uh, u-shaped deal and the the point of that was I found out was to uh, oil it. Um, some of these things have displacement oilers, and there's a, a variety of different uh, methods to uh, provide lubricant to a live stream steam train. But uh, they had this simple exhaust oiler. Now on this one it doesn't have that. So what I do is uh, before I run it each time I actually squirt some oil up the uh, exhaust port and uh, work it through. So. What, the, what this is, um, it has uh, the rod from the cylinder and piston connect to a flywheel in the back. There's a, uh, it's like a lead alloy flywheel in there to give it some mass. So um, that keeps it going. Now, uh, I've been fooling around with these live steam trains for a short while. And uh, I haven't had a lot of success with them. Um, exactly. I, I've had some limited success, but not, they're not running the way I want them to or know they could. Um, so this, this was a pleasant surprise. So in a little bit what I'm going to do is uh, fire this thing up and once I get it warmed up and up to temperature I'm going to uh, send it around my layout. Um, <laughs> the problem with this is it's, a, it's an open alcohol flame and I'm doing this inside which probably uh, this is one of those things, uh, hold my beer, watch this kind of thing, but uh, I have a fire extinguisher handy, and uh, I've been doing it for a little bit, so I don't see any uh, any problems. The train doesn't take off out of control. It, ru it runs, uh, because of the gear drive, it runs at a pretty controllable speed, so uh, in a couple minutes I'm going to fire this thing up, and, uh, and maybe you can see it take a take a short trip around okay, the layout. Okay, uh, I filled the boiler with about um, an ounce of water, maybe an ounce and a half, and I've loaded the uh, burner with uh, alcohol, or mess as they call it, uh, in England. And I guess, I don't know if you can see the burners are going there. Now the original burner had two burners. And when I made this one, I made it for the round wicks. And I added uh, another burner, which there was plenty of room to do. And it just, uh, it evens out the uh, dispersion of the heat. So once this thing gets warmed up a little bit, I'll uh, I'll start it up here and then uh, see if this I can. This thing's been it cooking right. here for a couple of minutes. Let's so see if it'll. Uh... Oh, there it goes. So that's how it runs. And uh, let me stick it on the track and see if I can uh, if I can send it around a couple. Of
So um, <clears throat> it was starting to slow down a little bit, so I, I blew out the uh, blew out the uh, wicks and uh, stopped the train. I got a little uh, American Fire uh, pre-war tender there that uh, man, it was just made for this train, so uh, I used it with that. And uh, let's see if I can get it to pull some a uh, couple passenger cars next. Um, so it was ran for a good 10 minutes, you know, with no load on it. So uh, I was pretty happy with how this worked. So uh, next thing I'm going to put a couple cars on it and see if it'll take that.